So we're very excited to have Catherine Halls as well, uh, who's the CEO of Aquarius Consulting Group, PTYLTD, uh, which has three, three law firms, uh, of which Digital Age Lawyers is one of them. Uh, she is the principal solicitor at Digital Age Lawyers and is also a barrister, a business influencer, social entrepreneur, and media personality based in Sydney, Australia. Catherine has appeared before the full bench of the High Court and is often asked to be a guest lecturer at Australian universities on topics such as business legal issues as well as social media and digital law. As an experienced legal practitioner, Catherine recognizes that you must niche your business and not be everything to everybody. I totally agree with that point. Catherine, thank you. Um, her focus on business and technology, uh, law, sees her offer a wide range of education programs. Please welcome Catherine. Thanks, Eob. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, my session is entitled Digital Age Law um, in Doing Business in the Digital Age. And in a sense, it flows on very nicely from what Karim was saying around marketing. Um, because just as, you know, you need plans around your marketing or your business, you also need plans around how you're going to do deal with the legal issues. And probably over the last two and a half years with COVID, there's been a dramatic shift around how people have had to do business. Lots of businesses had to move online and move online really quickly. And now is the time to really look at your online presence, your digital um, programs and your responsibilities as a business owner when you are doing business in the digital age. So I've just got a, a little bit of a presentation for you. So doing business in the digital age. So a few things I'm going to talk about are some legal issues, obviously regarding social media and digital Privacy Act, um, anybody who thinks we've got a right to privacy is, is very much mistaken. Bit of a look at some of the social media, bit of a look at intellectual property, employment, and then believe it or not, we now have something called emoji law. Um, if you thought those kissy faces you were sending in the workplace um, couldn't get you into trouble, trust me, they can. And not to mention some of the underlying issues relating to emojis. So that's a bit about me. Um, as we said, I run a number of, of different arms. Each one of them has their own unique and obviously digital age lawyers is all about assisting businesses in the digital age. So these are your list, if you are a business owner, of what you need to think about relating to digital and social media legal issues. So social media policies. Time and time again, I come across businesses who don't have a social media policy or even an organisation. So, for instance, I sit on a board for a chamber of commerce um, and there's no social media policy. So it's a bit like whoever wants to post, post whenever they want. There's no oversight, there's no plan. And sometimes some of those posts aren't particularly what the chamber should be promoting. And it's similar in your business. And I'll give you a really key example. One of my clients had no social media policy. Um, so what would happen is the apprentices would take photos whilst they were on the building site, upload them to their Facebook page. And, you know, sometimes the photos were of them messing around, maybe not in all their work gear. They received a fine from work cover. So it's really important you consider two words when you are looking at your business. Are you controlling the business? Are you protecting the business? And if you don't have a social media policy, then you are certainly not protecting or controlling your business. And you just heard Karim talk about the importance of brand. So often brand can be destroyed by an employee putting up an inappropriate post, sharing an inappropriate post. It's your business, your brand, and you need to ensure that you have control. Um, intellectual property, we're going to we'll talk about the two main areas of copyright and trademark. 
um, both of which get people into um, hot water very quickly. Um, and, you know, sometimes that water can be quite scalding. So really important we understand that. ACCC, so that's the Australian Consumer and Competition Commission. Um, it's a bit like work cover. They don't have to go much further than your Facebook page or your website um, to ping you on a number of areas that we'll talk about. Employment issues, again, bullying in the workplace. So bullying in the workplace is now the number one workers' compensation claim, and a lot of it is due to social media. So an employee isn't invited to an employee group on social media. That can be, you know, bullying. But there's also been a discrimination claim. Um, so for one organisation, the workers and management knew this, um, set up a Facebook group where they would share shifts. Now, obviously, if you weren't part of that Facebook group, you didn't get additional shifts. Um, and quite frankly, it was a lot of the older workers who weren't invited to this group, and therefore they didn't get the additional shifts. That was considered discrimination. Um, there's also issues about friending and unfriending people in the workplace and whether that can be discrimination. So if somebody sends you a friend request as a manager or as the owner um, and you accept some and not others, is that discrimination? Well, it could be. So, again, you really need to think about employment issues outside the scope, you know, of just an employment contract. The other thing with employment, even if it is outside work hours, on their home computer, and they're half pissed on a Saturday night and they send an aggressive email to somebody, they aggressively message them, um, you know, contact them in some way, that's your problem on Monday morning. So I sort of describe it like this, you know, years ago, if, you know, two, two people had, two of your employees had a punch up at the pub on Saturday night, it wasn't your problem Monday morning. But guess what? If two people have a punch up on social media, it's your problem on Monday morning. So you really need to look at your employment contracts and again, it comes back to a lot of what I said around social media policies. Um, do you have a policy that they can be friends? Um, I have a policy nobody can be friends. Now, you might say it's just because we're a law firm and nobody wants to be our friend anyway. Um, but quite frankly, you know, I don't need them having um, dispute on social media um, and it costing me my business or you know, a complaint around discrimination or bullying. Um, next one is really important post-COVID, which is data breach and privacy. Lots of people moved home to work and lots of people still are working at home, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, work-life balance, saving travel time, great. However, if they are using their personal computer for work, you may have an issue. What happens if they get hacked? What happens if their kid is on um, there and sends an email um, or they're downloading inappropriate material? Um, if they've got access to client or customer information that they shouldn't, what happens if, you know, their partner actually works for a competitor and they've got all confidential information at home. What have you put in place in terms of, you know, ensuring that there's no data breach? So, for instance, what I did was everybody got a laptop, everybody has a mobile phone that is for work only. Nobody else bar the employee can access or should have access to that computer or that phone. Um, because otherwise you're liable if they breach. Um, it's also about ensuring that you have the latest um, software to protect, um, you know, from any viruses or any Trojans or anything else um, that may try and attack your system. Um, so I really encourage if you have 
um, people working at home or even yourself, um, you know, as, as the owner, um, please ensure that you keep things separate um, and please ensure that you keep data and anything to do with your business um, separate from the rest of the family. Otherwise, you could find yourself in hot water around breaching people's privacy and, you know, if you allow data to be breached, you then got to report it to the privacy commissioner and you then need to take some steps around that. Um, some of the new things that you may need to and will need to be aware of, and it's a bit like, you know, um, electronic cars and driverless cars, um, it's not to say that they will be here tomorrow, but they are certainly making an impact. And that's things like smart contracts. Um, so a smart contract basically has blockchain technology behind it. So all the way from the beginning to the end, it's, it's self-serving and it's self-motivating. So nobody has to do anything unless something goes wrong. So that means a customer can order from you the entire chain of um, supply is taken care of between, you know, a crossover between law and, and computer technology and the goods arrive at your customer without anybody having to do anything. So as I said, smart contracts, you know, it's a bit like electric cars, not going to be here tomorrow, but they are certainly on their way. And there certainly as a business owner, if you're going to continue to do business in the digital age, you will need to start to come to terms with some form of blockchain. I mean, bills of lading for shipping are going electronic and not just, you know, DocuSign or smart or electronic contracts, but they're going, you know, from leaving a factory in China all the way to your customer's doorstep at Roselle without any human interaction. So it would all be done through contract and those smart contracts. And then we have emoji law, which I'll touch on. And if you're buying and selling a business, really important that you ensure you get the digital and social media assets. So that includes things such as trademark, websites, email addresses, Facebook, Instagram, all of those are the assets of the company now and they, re and they need to be included and transferred if you are buying the business. So again, you know, I see some very old fashioned sale of business contracts that don't include those assets and they really should be. They are a really important part of your business and actually have a value to them. So, you know, a key point there. Now, let's see. Um, so, in Australia, um, we do have data breach laws um, and there is mandatory data breach reporting. So this is where there is a breach of customer data and it needs to be reported to the customer and the privacy commissioner. So I'll give you a, a, an example. Um, a client of mine who is in the financial services industry, um, who's actually a mortgage broker, um, there's two John Smiths and they send the email with all the personal data of one John Smith to the wrong John Smith. So what that means is, you know, his, his privacy has been breached. So it used to be that what we'd do is we'd frantically try to hit the, the you know, return button and, and, you know, let's see if we can get rid of our mistake doesn't work. So now what you have to do is not only tell the John Smith that the email went to um, to delete it, but now you need to ring the other John Smith and tell him that his privacy has been breached. Now that's obviously something we never used to do. So, you know, it, it is the fact that you now need to report it to the customer. Um, now, 
it's businesses over three mil, except in a number of areas. And a number of those areas include such things as childcare centres, um, anything where you are collecting financial information. So if you're in the financial services, you need to be aware of data breach laws. Um, medical information. And by that, I don't just mean doctors, but I mean all of the allied health professionals as well. If you are collecting medical information, then you need to also be aware of how you are storing and collecting data. So really important um, that it's you don't just think about the three mil, but you also think about what type of business you're in and whether or not you need to comply with the mandatory reporting. Inclu included in social media and digital is misleading statements. Okay, many, many times I have heard this from a client, but it was only on Facebook. Facebook isn't another world, okay? It doesn't have another set of laws. It has exactly the same set of laws as any other media. It is a media, okay? So you cannot make misleading claims on social media about your business. Do not tell people that, you know, um, Grant Denyer has driven your car from your showroom or Grant Denyer or anybody else has brought your clothes or used your aftershave or whatever else you may be selling, um, you know, don't associate your business unless it is true with a celebrity. Um, don't say that your product does something it doesn't do. Um, you know, so you can't make misleading claims. You are also, and this is one of the key points, if you have a Facebook business page, you as the business owner is responsible for all comments on that page, whether you make them or somebody else does. So it doesn't matter if it's made by your customers, others, you need to monitor and you need to remove. And I know every marketer will say, don't remove comments, just deal with them. If it is misleading, deceptive, misdescription of your product, if it is defamatory, racist, has racial or sexual overtones, press the delete button, okay? It is about you protecting and controlling your business. So very important. I mean, you know, there's a fair few federal court cases that you have to accept responsibility for posts and testimonials on social media pages. And if you decide not to remove them, then the fine and the consequences are even going to be heftier. So can't stress enough, if you cannot monitor and control your social media, then don't be on it because otherwise you are just going to get yourself into trouble. In terms of intellectual property, again, do not put up something that you do not own the copyright to. In particular, photos. Okay, unless you took the photo or have properly purchased the license for the photo, it's not yours. So what I would strongly suggest is particularly everybody audit their web page. On your web page, you need to ensure that all photos that you have, you own or have purchased the proper license for. Do not assume that your website developer has. Ask the question because it's not them that is going to be sued, it will be you. And trust me, nowadays there is um, blockchain put behind photos and they can tell where and when they're published. It, the other thing with copyright is um, you need to ensure that when you are um, placing things on your Facebook page, you have the right um, authority as well for any photos. Copyright is a tangible expression 
of artistic work. So don't assume just because you pay for something that you own the copyright to it. Copyright must be assigned in writing. So that means you need an agreement with your web developer, with whoever else or whatever else photos you are taking and using on your page. Something is trademarked, then you cannot use it without their approval. So on your website, you need to ensure you own the photos. You need to ensure you're not infringing anybody's trademark. You need to ensure you have website terms and conditions and you need a privacy policy. Those are the things you need to go away and audit on your website. The other is social media competitions. Now, you cannot send unsolicited emails or electronic messages unless you have um, people's approval, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, with social media competitions, if it is a game of chance, then from, and given, depending how much the prize is, you will need a license to run that competition. If it is a game of skill, you will not. So really important that you understand both the SPAM Act, if you are collecting information via social media, you need to be upfront with people how you are going to use their phone number or their email address. And if you're not, then you can't use it. You know, I re remember going into a shop and they wanted my mobile phone number and then ever since I've received nothing but messages from them um, via, you know, mobile phone. Well, that's not allowed. So you've got to be upfront and you've got to be direct about it. Um, you need to abide by the social media platform rules. So, you know, particularly Facebook has the like ladders they don't like, so don't do because you can get yourself banned and then people come and what can we do? Well, don't break the rules. Know the rules and don't break them because there are consequences on a lot of the social media sites. Again, if you're running a competition, be clear and please ask that they're over 18 in order to enter into the competition. Um, I had one client who they were a swimwear company um, they weren't clear about the social media platform um, rules. They weren't clear about their own rules for the competition. They just said, um, you know, show us the best uh, design for a, a bikini or some ridiculous type of um, question. Um, they didn't ask if you were over 18. So a 13-year-old won this competition and needless to say, their mother was not impressed with the bikini that turned up at their house. She took to social media to complain and eventually it, really, it led to the downturn of their business and they had to close. So please do not think that some of this does not have consequences. It can have huge consequences for your business if you don't get it right. Now, in terms of social media policy, remember it is your business reputation at stake. Um, train your employees, know when to escalate issues, um, know also um, to have a system in place to respond to complaints. Don't do it on forums, fan sites or anything else. Um, take it offline and take it into an environment in which you can control. So what I would suggest is, you know, you... Every business under should, owner should undertake a legal strategy review. Um, you need to look at your social media policy, your website terms and conditions, your privacy policy, your estate planning, and your cyber security. If you're doing business, you're doing business in the digital age, and you need to understand the environment and the legal environment in which you are doing business. We have obviously a number of social media channels. We also um, do undertake um, legal strategy reviews for businesses and tell you what your legal risks are. So 
there's any other questions, then please don't hesitate to get into contact with us. Um, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into the things as a business owner you need to be aware of when doing business in the digital age. Thanks, everyone, and thanks, Eob. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was a fantastic uh, session. Uh, so much to learn there, I must say. Uh, half of those things uh, I wasn't even mindful of. Can I know, and I didn't even get on to emoji law. I know. <laughs> I was like, I put up an emoji and then you said that and I was like, oh, my God, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, it's, it's the new world. It is. It is. Can you tell us a bit more in terms, I mean, obviously there was a lot there uh, in, term, in terms of the, the, the law. Is there sort of a, a, a guideline that you can offer people? Does your firm do that? Because well, yeah. what we do is yeah. what I advise every business owner to do is, is what we call sit down with me and go through the legal strategy session because every business is different. Yeah. Every industry has different little nuances around it of yeah. what you need to be aware of. Um, and obviously if you've got 150, you know, if you've got employees, contractors, there are things you need to be aware of as well. So. Yeah. I generally suggest, like, we charge $275 to sit down and I, I do a full report of what your legal risks are and how you can fill okay. the holes. Yeah, that that is perfect because that will sort of, uh, it's sort of like a clarity session as well. <laughs> which well, is it good. is. I mean, yeah. you know, um, I think the buzzword is deep dive, which I have a huge <laughs> problem with, but besides the wording of it, yeah. um, it okay. and it is about the fact that... Um, I sort of put it, you know, it, it's a bit like the sexual revolution of the 70s. Everybody thought it was a good idea. Everybody got on board. And two <laughs> years later, they discovered AIDS. Oh, so no. It's, it's a bit like social media. Yeah. We all hopped on board and now we need to be very mindful of the legal consequences that come from running your business in the digital age. Yeah, and the laws are becoming more tougher for sure. Well, and they cross over as mm. well. Like you've got state, you've got federal. Um, so, you know, and then we've got EU law now that you need to be aware of. So yeah. um, it, it is, an, an, but if you get it wrong, as I said, you know, with the, the two women that operated the bikini business, it can be, lead to the end of your business. Yeah. It's terrible. Well, we've got, we definitely have a couple of uh, marketers at uh, social media uh, agencies here today. So they're going to consider everything when they advise their clients. But uh, Catherine, thank you once again. For You're welcome. Me. And um, have a fantastic day. Thank you.